All right, welcome back to the video, everybody. Uh, we're just going to jump straight into looking at my January training schedule as what some would call a pro cyclist. Um, I'm coming back from illness, uh, what I think was the flu, in uh, at the end of December. So as we speak now, we're into the second week of January, and we have three weeks left. I think. Uh, the first week was a bit of a write-off. I was just getting back into riding my bike again, a bit of consistency. And we're in the middle of documenting and showing this little bit of a return because Christmas and this time of year tends to be a bit of a troublesome one for lots of us. Um, many of us tend to get ill or go on holiday or, you know, whatever. Like, So I think a lot of us are coming back from something this time of year. So I am jumping into showing you these three weeks, um, mainly just about getting back to some sort of level where I feel like I'm being a lot more consistent and I'm not sort of having days where, you know, there's big peaks and troughs in how I feel sensation wise. Uh, I think you'll understand when I say this that if you have like a, a prolonged period off the bike and then you get back into it because you haven't been riding you often have lots of days where you're like you feel high and you feel low and you go high and you feel low like the sensations are never quite sort of consistent much like you're riding um, but it takes a while for that to come back again and that's what I'm trying to build I'm trying to build that sensation of consistency so not so the consistency will build that sensation but then the sensations and how i feel will build that consistency as well if you understand what i'm saying so let's go to the first week you can see there's lots of a, of just steady rides um there's obviously volume there i'm looking at around 16 to 17 hours again this is very not rough, but it it's it, it can change. Like, no training plan should be completely static, I believe. And also, each to their own. Like, this is my training plan, yours could be different. Um, but if there's any sessions in here that you like the look of, let me know. Or likewise, if you want to improve this, you feel like you can, also let me know. Uh, I'm interested to know people's thoughts in the comment section. Um, and, the TSS is probably the first thing that I would look at when I'm planning these weeks. So I would look back and I would know what I've done in the past and I would look at how I've managed to um, rebuild in the past and also looking at December, which was the last week, that, uh, the last month that I was able to put a lot of consistency together. I would look at what I managed to do there and then translate it into what I can do this month. Um, Obviously, if I wasn't ill, I would be able to hopefully build on it. But as it is, I'm almost exactly replicating what I did in December, give or take. So there's a little bit of tempo work. There's uh, some surges thrown in to that tempo. It's not like completely rigid, mainly because it replicates a lot of the riding that I do anyway. So, you know, I'm not just going to stick to one number, for example. The, the anaerobic or the the really high-end efforts, if you will, then, to just give them a name, they're going to be just there to keep, like, muscle memory. Um, I need to do a couple of efforts later on this month, or going into February, where I might need to do this kind of thing. So I'm not looking for performance with this. I'm just looking for a little bit of remembering what it's like. Uh, and you'd be surprised at how little you'll need in order to remember what's that, what that's like, or at least to prepare you for, you know, a big effort or a big race or something where you need a short effort like that. And then going into the second week, again, it's no surprise to keep in the volume there. Um, the intensity changes a little bit, so we're moving through the zones almost and going into what will be just below threshold if you will but i'm going to be spending a lot of my time feeling my way through that as opposed to sticking rigidly to numbers i'll be using uh, the uh, if i'm doing workouts indoors on swift for example i'm going to be using the intensity um slider i like to call it but you know where you can increase or decrease the intensity more than likely i'll be decreasing it because of the time off that i've had but I highly encourage anybody who's coming back from illness or injury or holiday or whatever 
to use that as much as possible. Because if you were outdoors and you're doing these intervals, you wouldn't be solid or rigid like you would be on Zwift, you know? So, so give yourself that slack, uh, or at least I'm giving myself that slack. So you get onto Thursday and this is the, the second double session of the week. And, you know, I'm, I'm lucky in a way that at the minute I can afford to just do one session on that day and just combine it. But if time is uh, running out, then I will get up early and I will knock out the first session and then do the, the second session in mid-afternoon or late evening. But one of, the, one of the big key areas for me is being able to produce power in a fatigued state, but also like really late on. And it's also a really good sign without really testing. I mean, it's not what you'd call a test per se, but you could, for argument's sake, just do like a five hour ride and do like a 15 minute threshold effort right at the end. And if you did that like once every two or three weeks, then you could almost see like, is there a change in how that 15 minute effort feels as your fitness has increased? And it's a similar thing with the Thursday session. You know, I'm gonna be doing a bunch of really important intervals early on, and then I'm gonna have a lot of endurance, and then I'm gonna do another finisher effort at the end, and we'll just see how that plays out. Not really any um, like expectations, it's just data collection for further down the line. Um, and then a threshold climbing ride. But generally speaking, it's like it's like one day on, one day off. Um, that's the kind of mentality I'm going into this with. So then we go into the third week and I'm gonna be doing a fitness test on Alpha Zwift, which will be live streamed. You've seen it you've seen me done it before, no doubt, where you know I, I completely negative split it so I start off a lot easier then I feel like I can finish and I finish with a bit of a ramp at the end in the last say five or 10 minutes. So I'm gonna be doing that somewhere around the end of the month, but I'm not entirely sure yet. Um, and because that week is like not an important week, but you know, I'm gonna be focusing more on, on, on that, then there'll be very little in terms of intensity anywhere else other than the uh, Zada test, which some of you would be familiar with on Zwift and one gym session. So as opposed to two sessions, two gym sessions a week, we'll just have that one next week uh, after the fitness test. Um, but that's it. Uh, I think it's a good place to start. Well, to start anyway. So, you know, I think uh, paralysis over analysis, I think it's just good to get some uh, workouts there that I can look at and just tick off and get some green boxes on. Uh, on the calendar or on training peak. So that is my calendar. I hope you enjoy this segment of the video. I hope you enjoy some of the footage from the last couple of days of riding. So I've come out today to do some hill reps, albeit they're on different hills. Um, and we're on gravel, although we've done one climb already, which was on tarmac. Uh, but the idea is that I'm obviously adding a little bit of intensity in now. Ooh. And one way to do that is to do it unstructured, so to speak. So before I even build any interval sessions, I kind of need to know where I'm at. And we need to kind of get a move on and get back into training as soon as possible. Uh, and everything says I can right now, which is good. Uh, but I do need to see where I am. So. We're doing a couple of hill reps today where I'm just going to do some uh, five to ten minute climbs, probably around uh, 160, 170 beats a minute. I'm not using power as a target because, well, I don't have a power meter that's uh, compatible on my gravel bike, uh, which is obviously reading the same and accurately as my other power meter. So. <clears throat> The problem is I can't base it, they're two different power meters, so you know one's probably reading 20 watts below the other for example, so it's better to just base it off of effort. Uh, you can't really go that far wrong to be honest, I mean especially if you give yourself a range like I am, so 160 to 170 beats a minute.
well, saying goodbye to my front derailleur for the time being. Uh, I think the motor has gone. Um, I'll insert a video here. So basically there's like a like a very high pitch type of it sounds like metal or metal sound but it's sadly it needs to go back it is under warranty uh, and hopefully I won't be without my my road bike for too long but it's classic really they say that electronic gears are brilliant until they stop working and uh, yeah so that's where we're at with this so I'm gonna nestle it in here and take it back to the post office. How's Hogwarts Legacy treating you? I was just saying how these two bags of shopping have literally cost like 75 pounds. I've got corn mince, I've got some risotto rice, pasta sauce, curry powder, maple syrup, eggs, rice puddings, uh, some dried fruit, some cereal bars, and more fruit. Basically half of my time is spent in the fruit and veg section. And this is our meal plan for the week. So we have a Mexican chicken stew, is it? I think we're gonna do it in a slow cooker. We got tofu and ginger slow cooker, something or other. Sounds nice, I don't know what that is. Uh, barbecue, uh, I can't read your lemon pea risotto, sweet potato, chickpea curry, most of it will be done in the slow cooker, which means I'll have to try and remember during the day that I need to put the slow cooker on, <laughs> otherwise we'll have nothing to eat in the evening.